investments in business and infrastructure have direct impact on a country's economy, as both sectors promote innovation, productivity and economic growth. On this episode of Government in Action, we will take a look at the budgetary allocations within the business and infrastructure sectors as government continues to build a Guyana that will see Guyanese enjoying the good life. Within the local business arena, the promotion of economic development through business is the responsibility of the Ministry of Business. The Ministry is primarily responsible for the development of a more conducive environment for local businesses as well as foreign direct investment. Within Budget 2017, the Business Ministry received over $1.7 billion in allocations for the promotion of economic growth. Minister of Business Mr. Dominic Gaskin during the budget debate said that the allocations will seek to achieve the Ministry's vision of improving the living standards for all Guyanese in a diverse and green economy. These allocations include the promotion of green energy projects, tax concessions and tax holidays in support of green investments. Mr. Speaker, the environment in which we expect Guyana's businesses to operate is of critical importance and must be an enabling one. And so in 2016, the Ministry of Business made a commitment to improve that environment so that private businesses operating in Guyana could do so in an efficient and cost-effective manner, thereby making them more profitable and more competitive. Minister Gaskin said that through collaboration with the World Bank, a report has been created to address directly the indicators where Guyana can improve in the business sector. The findings of the report have made it imperative for the Ministry to, over the next few years, seek to correct the deficiencies that place the country at a disadvantage in attracting investors and that affected business operations in Guyana. Guyana has already improved its World Bank ranking by 16 places in the last report. In 2017, the Ministry will provide support for and facilitate the execution of critical reforms in areas identified in the various reports and assessments in order to significantly improve the ease of doing business in Guyana, as well as to improve Guyana's ranking in the Doing Business Index. And it is expected that these reforms will last well into the year 2018 and thereafter will have to be constantly reviewed in order to maintain the gains that we will have achieved. Government believes that small businesses hold significant potential with regard to employment creation and national income. But small businesses continue to face many constraints to growth and development. In this regard, much focus will be placed on the provision of more formal opportunities to intensify capacity building within the small business sector through implementation of the Small Business Procurement Program this year, through a collaborative effort of the Small Business Bureau and the National Procurement and Tender Administrative Board. The Bureau will continue to work with small businesses in 2017 to build capacity and prepare them for access to the program. Further, in 2017, the Small Business Bureau, in partnership with other entities, will offer business incubation services to provide targeted support to small businesses with high growth potential by ensuring that they can access equipment as well as support services required to propel their development. Such facilities will allow for enhanced competitiveness and provide a boost clearly needed for these early small enterprises. Work will also continue through the Guyana Office for Investment, GoInvest, in promoting and facilitating local and foreign investments, while also promoting the export of local goods. Focus will also be placed on the issue of youth unemployment, which remains a grave concern for the government. And the Ministry of Business will pursue the expansion of private enterprise on many fronts in order to increase employment opportunities for young Guyanese. The Small Business Bureau will be scaling up its activities in 2017 and will actively promote youth entrepreneurship as a means of channeling, channeling innovation towards economic activity. Enhanced outreach activities in every region will be carried out. These will be done through individual agency initiatives of the Small Business Bureau, as well as through collaborative efforts with other public sector agencies. Minister Gaskin said that his ministry will pursue the expansion of private enterprise in an effort to increase employment opportunities for young Guyanese. 100 students from educational institutions are expected to benefit from entrepreneurial initiatives. 
10 students will also be awarded grants toward the implementation of the ventures outlined in their business proposal through training they would receive. Other points of focus within the business sector include the improvement of the Sophia Exhibition Center for the hosting of Gaia Expo, Guyana's premier business expo, and continuing to raise the standards of business operations through the National Bureau of Standards. These and other initiatives, the Minister said, will all contribute to the expectation of improved growth for this year as government continues to strive for the good life for all Guyanese. The development of infrastructure plays a vital role in encouraging a country's economic growth as it enhances a country's productivity, thereby making firms more competitive and boosting the economy. President David Granger has said that infrastructural development is the key to unlocking the vast potential of Guyana's hinterland and linking it with the coastland. Further, infrastructural development has to be done in the context of Guyana's green agenda. Georgetown today is becoming a clean city, a green city, and a serene and safe city once again. Sanitation and drainage to avert the danger of vector-borne disease, of chikungunya, of dengue, of filaria, malaria, and Zika are top priorities. Business places, public premises, and municipal properties must all go green, adopting solar and wind power, introducing renewable energy technologies, developing solid waste disposal techniques, recycling waste and prohibiting the use of non-biodegradable materials. As the country's brain for engineering, the Ministry of Infrastructure has been working with much vigor to transform the country and with a budgetary provision of over $34 billion, Minister of Public Infrastructure Mr. David Patterson has assured that the ministry is well on its way to achieving its overall goals for contributing to the development of Guyana. During the budget debates, Minister Patterson, in his budget presentation, outlined several high-level transformative projects that are to be conducted with the generous allocations. Among these include focus on the advancement of government's green agenda through the work of the Guyana Power and Light Limited. Minister Patterson said that the utility company is a major stakeholder in the achievement of the vision of Guyana's green economy. As such, several initiatives have been established and will continue to be established in this sector to achieve this goal. These include the commencement of preparatory steps for the introduction of renewable energy from intermittent and non-intermittent sources including wind, solar, biomass and hydropower. The government of Guyana believes that an energy mix from such sources is the best option in decentralizing renewable energy to various parts of Guyana and is also in keeping with the country's commitment to increasing its renewable energy use to 100 percent by 2025. With the need to ensure proper road and bridge networks and ensure sea and river defence, expansion works included on the Ministry's agenda will take place on the East Coast and East Bank Demerara highways, sea defences, the development of major roads, bridges and other projects. With increased road traffic, the need for the expansion of the two major highways has become imperative over the years. Works for the expansion of the East Bank Demerara four-lane project funded by the International Development Bank started in 2011 and were completed in September 2016 under this administration at a total cost of US $17.7 million. But the minister said that more work in this area is planned for the year 2017 while advancements have been made in the agreement for the East Coast Demerara expansion project. The project, which covered 5.4 kilometers from Providence to Diamond, is now under the defect liability period, which will conclude in September 2017. Additionally, sir, I'm pleased to report that public advertisement for the pedestrian and vehicle overpass along the East Bank, Demerara, has been placed in the print media Tenders will be opened on December the 20th, 2016, and civil work is expected to commence in 2017. After considerable delay, the framework agreement with the People's Republic of China for 45.5 million U.S. dollars concessional loan for the completion of the widening and improvement of the east coast of Demerara Highway was signed by the Ministry of Finance on November 23rd. 
2016. China Railway Force Group will complete the entire stretch from Better Hope to Belfield. Budget 2017 has provisions for $1.4 billion. Countrywide, the development of roads has also been a noticeable ongoing endeavor of the ministry, with the construction and rehabilitation of urban roads being completed in regions 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 10 under the Miscellaneous and Urban Roads Program. The minister said that in comparison to last year, budgetary allocations for these two programs have increased in every region for the year 2017. Moreover, the minister said that the linking of the hinterland to the coastal area, a commitment that was outlined in this government's campaign 2015 manifesto, is a project which has come to realization since government took office as well. Budget 2017 makes provisions for $2.3 billion for the continuation of road rehabilitation and construction. Sir, at the moment, sir, contracts are out for rehabilitation works along the Bartica Pataro Corridor. Minister Brooms made reference to this, sir. Sir, this, when completed, sir, this will um, once again allow, have, provide a linkage between, a direct road linkage between Bar, Bar, Bartica and Maria. Inclusive of this, in, in this um, project, sir, will be the rehabilitation of the Denham Bridge, sir, and the construction of a new bridge at Cassandra Crossing, sir. More than just the development of infrastructure, however, the Ministry is also involved with helping to contribute to the overall beautification of the country, and several projects under its forte reflect this goal. Two such projects include the beautification of the waterfront areas at central ports in Georgetown, which the government proposes to complete through partnership with the UK Caribbean Infrastructure Fund. There will be the creation and restoration of a modern waterfront recreational area between Kingston and Ogle, sir, which will include the upgrading of the Starbrook Market in the Vedin Hoop Stelling, and sir, to ensure that this waterfront development retains uh, remains accessible year round. And sir, and in, in keeping with the, the announcement with the Minister of Business made, there will also be the acquisition of a dredge in this part of the project. Additionally, sir, a dredge, sir, ma'am. Additionally, there will be the rehabilitation and upgrading of the Linden to Mabura Road and the construction of a bridge across the Rupununi River at Kubukari. The projects will be overseen by the Caribbean Development Bank and formal agreements were finalized for these projects in December. The year 2017 holds many prospects for the achievement of President Granger's vision of building a green economy, as these ministries continue in their mandate to contribute to the good life for all Guyanese. On next week's episode, we continue to look at Budget 2017 by examining developments in the areas of education and social cohesion. This is Jasmine Payne. Thank you for joining us.